Good morning guys, uh, I'm on my bike and I'm actually on my way to the bus station to go to the airport. Let's go. Here's my airport bus, I think, 12.30. Uh, well, don't worry, I'm not just gonna leave my bike parked here for 10 days. I'm actually gonna give it to a guy uh, named Isaiah, a new friend of mine, who wanted to rent a bike anyways. So it's perfect timing that he's gonna gonna drive it and I don't have to park it somewhere. Yo, Isaiah! Isaiah! That was good timing, I was just making a vlog. How you doing? I got here. It, it's beautiful, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know how normally they do, normally do like a walk around the damage? <laughs> All right, damage, 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 damage. <laughs> yeah, it's not even good. <laughs> just, just don't damage your head, just rear the helmet. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> For your steering wheel, I'll replace it with a brand new TV. Woo! <laughs> Pit my ride, go ahead. <laughs> All right, be safe. I'll right, catch man. you in 10 days. Take care. That was good. <laughs> I, let's, let's hope uh, it starts for him. <laughs> I'm gonna shot of you driving away. Be safe though. There's a ramp behind you. I hope that's easier. No, that's how I got up. Isaiah, perfect timing. I'm gonna get my ticket and get on the bus right now. See ya. And I'll have to get my ticket. I already bought one online, but I think I still gotta pick up a printed copy. So if I didn't buy it early, I'd have, I'd have to wait another hour and a half. So it's good to always buy online. Cup and cup. Thank you. Cup and cup. One o'clock? One o'clock. Okay, cup and cup. Sit anywhere, Mike. Yes. Cup and cup. I'm flying to Chiang Mai, coming for New Year's. Hopefully, it'll be an easy flight. We'll see. <laughs> but guys, it was seriously cold on that bus. 
I think I'm getting a little sick from it. Even though I'm wearing a long sleeve and I had this as like a scarf. It was so cold on that bus. It's probably unhealthy. This airport is so busy. I think it's because it's holiday season right now. It's crazy. All right, domestic departures this way. By the way, I just realized I am here. My flight doesn't leave until 6.50 p.m., like 7 p.m. And it's three. <laughs> so I think I'm here, what, four hours early? Which isn't too bad, but hopefully I can use the lounge because I need to get some work done, some editing done for you guys. All right, so I just got through immigration. Oh, no, I didn't get through anything. I got through the security check to go through immigration. Actually, there's no immigration. It's, it's uh, domestic, so easy. But they were pretty strict. They checked your ID, and not only do they want to see your digital boarding pass, but they wanted you to open your email and show that they actually got you actually got an email from AirAsia, and it wasn't uh, just some like photoshopped boarding pass. Which I guess makes sense. I don't want people going into the terminal with a you know an altered pass or anything, right? But I was kind of a little bit surprised how uh, how strict that is. They're definitely not four hours early for their flight like I am. I don't know if I should be worried, but my flight's not even on the not on here yet. Maybe I'm so early it's not even on there yet. So even though BKK is a very big airport, it's well designed, so you never have any problems here. Uh, I didn't realize this until afterwards. I read some of the comments and I read some of the reviews of Istanbul's new airport. And it's not just me, guys. Uh, the world's like premier airport expert, the guy who runs one mile at a time, who literally just you know travels the world and blogs about different airports, he said Istanbul's new airport is the worst airport design he's ever seen. And it's because it's one giant rectangle but with no shuttles, no, there's no train. And the only reason why it's so big is because Erdogan, the Turkish president, wanted to build the world's biggest airport, literally just for his legacy, just so he could say, you know, while I was president, I built the world's biggest airport. So here's one of the lounges I can use, but I think there's a better one closer. This one looks a little bit uh, makeshift. So it looks like there's a bunch of places to eat. I'm actually curious what these prices are like being at an airport. I know it's not as cheap as that food court I was at. It's about $10 for the set. That's a little bit less. That's actually not too bad. That's a uh, Eight bucks, maybe. I'll get that. Looks decent as well. Eleven dollars. So yeah, definitely more expensive. But then again, you can get something here: a shrimp omelet for one seventy-nine. That's not bad at all. Or one fifty-nine. Definitely cheaper than in the U.S. by the airport. I mean, airport food's always more expensive, anyways. Uh, should I ask this guy? Um, which one is the best lounge for a party pass? The the yeah, party pass. Which one is the like the best lounge? Uh, Coral. Coral. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, uh, I forgot how to say it. A uh, couple got <laughs> guys. I can't believe I said Diakui to this Thai uh, worker. Uh, and then I I've been here for two weeks and I could not for the life of me think of Kapung Kap for some. Weird reason. But anyways, uh, let's check out Burger King's prices. I'm curious about that as well. It looks like it's pretty expensive, guys. Five ninety nine. What is this? So just the burger is like eight bucks. Three hundred for just a Whopper without a meal. So with the meal, it would be six, 500. 
Turkish, how much is that? Sorry, cup. How much is the normal Whopper meal? It's two. Yes, no Whopper. No uh, no, no bacon, just like normal Whopper have. No bacon, right? Yeah, the cheapest one, cheapest Whopper. No bacon, no cheese. Like uh, with cheese, but normal Whopper, like the cheapest Whopper. Two hundred forty-nine baht. And meal, the small one or medium. Four thirty-nine. Okay, come on, thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Ooh, so small Whopper meal will be two four hundred thirty-nine baht, which is thirteen bucks. I mean, I guess that's kind of standard for being at an airport, but this is exactly why I have a priority pass. Uh, I got it through a credit card, which ends up costing me about two hundred fifty dollars a year. And from what I know, every time I swipe it, they pay the lounge $25. And which means if I use it 10 times a year, everybody kind of breaks even, <laughs> you know? I'm breaking even, they're breaking even. But if I am traveling a lot and I use it more, then it's definitely worth it. Um, but for me, just like a convenience and a comfort. I used to fly business class when I was you know, working in a business out, out and I had a lot more uh, income and points. And I kind of got used to the comforts of traveling, you know, in and going to these lounges. I always liked it, having a nice, comfortable seat. I can't afford to fly business class anymore, uh, all the time, especially. But I can't afford 250 bucks a year, so this is kind of like my nicety to keep me sane when I'm at airport, sort of being in here and just uncomfortably sitting in a loud area. Uh, I can at least enjoy a little creature comforts. That's why I use it, and that's why I'm happy they exist. And the guy at the info desk said the Coral Lounge was the best one. And it's right here. And definitely already I can tell it's gonna be better than that makeshift lounge that was literally just right next to the, the walkway, which is also probably busier because everybody stops there. Oh, I've actually been here before. I remember this, it's really nice. Cup of cup, thank you. And the trolley you cannot put inside. Uh -huh. Trolley. Trolley? Okay, I'll leave it. Uh, and what about uh, Wi-Fi? You can scan this one. Okay. Scan the job. It's unlimited, yeah? Yes. Okay, come cup. All right. So, nice setup. It has plugs, USB and outlets right here in the tree. Makes it really convenient. And here's the internet speed, guys. Unlimited. Look at that amazing download. And let's check what the upload speed is. Oh my god. See, this is why Bangkok is better than Istanbul. <laughs> Just this. So, one of the reasons why I like having faster internet here is then you can actually just download uh, movies if you have. I mean, you can download movies, you can download YouTube videos if you have a YouTube Premium, just stuff you can watch. So just as a reminder, when I was flying through Istanbul, which is a, was it, $14 billion airport that they just built, you had to scan your passport for Wi-Fi, even at the airport lounge. I asked the front desk, like, you gotta go inside and scan it. And then it was limited to one hour, and it was super slow. It was like one megabyte up and down or something like that. Here it's like literally 300 times faster and it's unlimited and it's free. I don't have to do any, any BS. To be fair, if you asked the staff or you complained about the internet, the staff would give you like the secret code, then it was okay. But that's just annoying for everyone else. Uh, this is why I like Bangkok, like you could just do it. And also remember there was no power outlets. They were in the ground in the most unlike the stupidest place to put it it's like there so you have to run this long cable to where you sit here they're so smart they put it in the design like literally this is the table and like, and I, at first i was trying to look for it i was like where where would it be and i was like oh where's the most convenient place they can possibly put it i'm like right here like and 10 inches from where your device is going to be i love it <laughs> this is a really nice design as well look at this glass here so you feel like you're outdoors you're not waiting in an airport 
Lots of nice seating, plenty of chairs. I don't like love mess cafe, but at least it's a proper machine. When they grind the beans, that's, that's pretty nice. Any of these cups are nice. Like look at this nice china that they give you. Johnson Bro, whoever that is, the job Johnson Bro. And these look, these are nice. Come up. Okay, come up. Only slightly annoying thing is the bathroom is outside. Uh, a lot of lounges have their own bathrooms, but I'd rather have everything else be great and just have to go outside to sweat it. Uh, it's just here on the left. It's like a one minute walk, it's fine. Alright, well, no shower or anything, but again, this is a domestic flight, so you really don't need it. You're just gonna come here for usually an hour. I came four hours early on purpose because I needed a place to work from anyways. And I figured instead of going to a coffee shop and then come to the airport, why not just come here, take advantage of my priority pass, get some food, get a little work done, and then be here plenty of time. All right, now let's check out some of these food options, guys. Let's see what we have. First off, really nice silverware. That's kind of cute. Fish cakes and fried chicken. Ooh, that looks really nice. Spicy eggplant curry chicken. And even a chicken biryani. I think I'm gonna be happy with, with all this. Orange juice, apple juice, dragon fruits in the airport lounge, watermelon, some nice desserts, and a couple drinks. And it looks like they have a bar over there. I don't think I'm going to start drinking yet, but we have some nice cocktails as well. I'm going to start the soda. So it looks like they just brought out a fresh platter of uh, seafood. Shin. I actually like chicken more. I decided to warm up my chicken a little bit in the schmeg. And here's some spicy crab curry. It looks good. Hello. On all these different vegetables. Alright, here's what I have for lunch, guys. It looks amazing. This is kind of worth the 25 bucks of sitting here. Actually, definitely worth it. All right, finally time to do a little bit of work. Hey guys, taking a little bathroom break, had like four drinks. I forgot how long it takes food to edit a video. I thought I was gonna bang it out real quick. But I'm only eight minutes in out of a 40 minute video, so I don't know if I'm gonna get it done in time. I have almost two hours left though, so maybe I can get it done. Alright, I'm trying to get myself a little cocktail. Cup and cup, thank you. Alright, well that's it. I didn't have time for a time massage, unfortunately, even though this one looks way better than the one I had in uh, Turkey. Also free here. Uh, come cup. So unfortunately I was editing the whole time so I didn't have time to do the massage but I'm halfway through the video. Four hours for half a video? Oh my gosh. Can't believe it takes me four hours to edit half a video. The things I do for you guys. Alright, we gotta go to B3. See how far it is. It's nice that they have these signs for people who need to transfer internationally and they're everywhere. So you like, Thailand has so much more staff working than in Turkey. Maybe it's because low wages they can afford it, but I'm sure wages in Turkey aren't very high either. But literally they're every like 10 meters, you can't miss them. They're like, if you're transferring, come talk to me. What this mall, I mean this airport doesn't have is like a Hermes or something, but I don't need that. 
so it looks like my gate is just here. There's 180 meters away. But and this is a, a downside and I call them out. When they do things that suck, I'm gonna call you guys out on it. The airport lounge, it's outside of security, which means I can't just stay in the lounge until boarding and then just walk five minutes over. I have to come 25 minutes early to get through security because there might be a line or it might take a long time, who knows. Most other airports will always put security first. So you, once you get inside, you can relax. But this is how they did it. All right, Air Asia 730B3. This is where I'm gonna leave my bags. At least there isn't a long line, which is good. Well, even though it was slightly annoying that they put security uh, after the lounge, it was fast. From door to door, from when I left the lounge, it was 14 minutes <laughs> to come and get through. So at least it was super fast. But that's the problem is it's unknown. It could take longer or, you know, they might need to pull you aside and check all your stuff. Uh, they actually checked my bag for my power bank to make sure it was smaller than, you know, what, whatever their maximum allowance is. So, oh well, it was easy. So, now I'm assuming I'm actually gonna be early for my flight. Johnny FD 8103. Yeah, definitely early, look at all those people. Look at all those people waiting, guys. This is why I pay $250 a year for a lounge, so I don't have to sit here. And since I couldn't go bring my water to the security, I brought an empty bottle of water to refill here. Alright guys, so I've been sitting here kind of waiting uh, to board. They always end up boarding like super last minute for some reason, but I did get to check, check, check the Wi-Fi for you to see how it compares. So you still have to log in, uh, but instead of scanning your passport and giving them all the details, you just put your name and your email and you can just put whatever you want because they don't check. <laughs> you only get an hour, but you can just you log in every hour. So technically it's unlimited and best of all, it is super fast. I think I speed tested like 30 or 40 down and then like 50 up. So really fast internet, completely usable. Only annoyance is you have to log in once an hour. Other than that, it's completely free. No scanning password needed. Uh, and then the, the obviously the, the Wi-Fi the loud is completely perfect. So another thing that Turkey can learn from. Alright, so it looks like about 20 minutes before takeoff, we're finally boarding. But I'm just gonna let these guys go first, it's been a side seating anyways. Oh shit. Gate change? Oh, thank you. Oh my god. Okay. Alright, well, I'm not sure why the last second gate change, but... Here we go. All right, it's a little bit strange to have to move everyone to another gate, but small hiccup, shouldn't be that big of a deal. and I've definitely had gates change before but never this last minute it's always been like you know within like half an hour because they know so who knows maybe they couldn't park that spot uh, maybe there was another plane scheduling conflict who knows I'm 
sure it didn't do it on purpose. There's all the staff running to try to make it over. And now it's going to be a bit of a mess because everyone's just going to queue up. <laughs> so just sitting. That's why I never carry a rigged uh, case. I carry a soft bag that you can stuff anywhere. Oh shit, that could be three. Guys, this is super crazy. I clearly heard they say everybody would be B3, and I'm the only one because a bunch of people are asking the same question here. But I think there's two flights leaving from the same gates uh, Vietjet one and then this one going to different places. That's what's confusing everyone. We'll see what happens. Even though that ground staff told me to wait and get in this line. I'm just gonna go up anyways, just in case. That tiny, tiny chance that we got updated again and she didn't know. But everybody who's on the other flight needs to, needs to just sit down. It's not confusing everyone. Like, why are they just standing around? Go sit down if this is not your flight. A different flight. Then tell them to sit down. It's confusing for everybody. <laughs> Guys, if you're not flying to Chiang Mai, please sit down. You're confusing everybody. Nothing. You can boarding now, sir. Thank you. So, yeah. So, luckily, I went up, even though there was a huge line, I assumed that these people were waiting in line to board the same flight, but no, the fucking idiots are just standing there blocking everybody, wasting all this time, even though their plane's not angry yet. And I guess they've asked them to sit down and they just refuse because they're fucking cheap. And I asked them very clearly as well. And nobody, everyone just stood there like, Tempted to go back there and yell at everyone again, but I didn't. Yeah, I learned to be more selfish. As long as I'm on the plane, fuck everyone else. They can miss their flight if they want.
located at row number one and over the exit areas. Put your seat in an upright position, fasten your seatbelt, secure the tray table to its original position, put your armrest down, and keep your window shades opened. bags ready so I can go straight to the taxi. Oh, so it looks like I can use Grab or the taxi. Let me see how much this will cost. 150. Let's see how much a Grab would be. Well guys, I booked a Bolt which was 68 baht, exactly half the price of the airport taxi. Uh, it's not that expensive, it's, it's actually five bucks, it's still a good deal. It's, it's way better than Phuket, which has like a taxi mafia, which I fucking hate Phuket for. Uh, also, everything's closer in Chiang Mai, like the airport's very close to everything. So, let's go guys. Look at that, MG. <laughs> My So I told the driver door one. Let's see if he comes. I think it's this guy right here. Hold on. Five, 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 nine. Cop. It's a wagon. It's kind of nice. Oh, I haven't had a wagon in a while. So, what did cop? Okay, bye. Okay. Oh. Welcome to Chiang Mai. Long time I didn't come here. Oh, okay. Hood. It's been a while, guys. I just realized I'm super close to this airport. I'm halfway to the city. <laughs> All these crazy neon lights everywhere. This is karaoke. taken off and this is where I'm going to be staying guys for the next two weeks and uh <laughs> guess what you're gonna see old traditional Thai style teak house a little bit outside of the city and a Muay Thai gym built inside Sorry, cop. 
I have no idea what the office is. There was this guy. Sorry, cop. Uh, can check in, right? Huh? Check in hotel. Uh -huh. No. Call me. Okay. Come on, cop. Maybe it's this one, guys. Maybe the wrong one. Oh, I think it's this one actually. Oops. All right. My bag.